Hey there, guys. Welcome back to another sports vlog. It is Thursday, August 28th. Or, uh, you know, time this video is being made. <laughs> and, uh, bit of a short week this week since I, uh, covered the last two weeks of, you know, uh, sports in my last sports vlog, which I believe was my fifth. Uh, I got a haircut. Might be the first thing you notice. Got a little tired of having to handle all that hair. You know, I just, I'm glad it's short again. I really like this. Uh, but, uh, you know, just because it was a short week doesn't mean we have any less to talk about. I have a lot of football coming at you, some baseball, and to end it, some hockey. And uh, I, before we get into this, I want to mention that uh, Tony Stewart has announced that he will race in the uh, next coming uh, NASCAR race, I believe. I'm not I'm not a big NASCAR fan, so I don't know what exactly he's going to be racing in, but he uh, he's entering. He's racing again after... This is going to be the first time after uh, the incident where he uh, hit and killed a 17-year-old kid. So, let's, let's talk some football. Uh, the Patriots traded Logan Mankins to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for tight end Tim Wright and an undisclosed draft pick. I was very surprised to hear that the Patriots would trade Logan Mankins. He was a veteran offensive lineman. He uh, he was a big name on the Patriots team for a long time, and I guess I guess Tom Brady's really not happy with this. But um, you know, it is what it is. I know uh, it's a good it's a good move as far as like clearing up a lot of money goes, but. I, I don't know. I really liked Logan Mankins. He was one of the veterans on the team. He's, uh, he's a really good offensive lineman. However, Tim Wright, uh, you know, I, I have I don't know much about him, but, you know, I'm on Twitter a lot, and, uh, you know, I, I've heard uh, nothing but good things about him. That uh, they, I actually saw somebody compare him to Aaron Hernandez, uh, you know, minus the alleged murder. So yeah, uh, I've heard good things about Tim Wright, and I think that's what New England's going for. They don't want to rely completely on uh, Rob Gronkowski, and that's probably for the better because Rob Gronkowski's coming off of ACL surgery, and on top of that, he had back surgery and forearm surgery. You know, the guy, the guy is like the six million dollar man. You know, he's had so much work put into him. It's just, you know, it's it's a gamble if you go in with just him. So, you know, as much as I like I like Logan Mankins, I can understand why the Patriots made this move. And I'm not I've never questioned Robert Kraft or Bill Belichick, and I'm not starting now. You guys remember in my first sports vlog, I mentioned that Josh Gordon is facing a 1-year suspension for uh marijuana being found in his drug test and uh, I mentioned in I think in my last sports vlog that uh, he got an appeal and that he's gonna play the season well yesterday I found out that uh, no he's not gonna play at all he's got that one year suspension it, he's completely he's done for the season over pot you know what say whatever you want marijuana is not a bad drug at all it really isn't it, it, you know, I've gone over this, I went over this in my first sports vlog, in Colorado and in Washington. It's been decriminalized. It's legal in those two states. In Michigan, where I live, uh, it's it's been, it's legal for medical use. If you have a card, you are eligible to get medicinal marijuana. And let me, let me tell you something. I learned this a few days ago. Suicide by way of overdose on uh, pills has decreased 25% in Michigan because people are smoking medical marijuana instead of taking pills to help with their, you know, their depression. That's huge. 25%. A decrease in suicide by, you know, because when you're taking antidepressants, you know, people take too much and it and ends up killing them. You take too much pills, you're going to die. You smoke too much dope, you're going to fall asleep or get really hungry. <laughs> uh, you know, my point is, is this is bullshit. It's completely infuriating. 
I don't think Josh Gordon should be suspended at all. And if he and if he has to be suspended, it shouldn't be for any more than a couple games because Ray Rice got two games for fucking knocking a woman out, which is his wife now, and dragging her out by her feet. And that, that brings me to something else that the NFL uh, initiated today. From now on, domestic violence incidents, uh, your first offense in the NFL, if a player is hit with a domestic violence incident, like arrested or whatever, the first incident is a six-game ban from the NFL. And uh, your second offense, you get kicked out of the NFL and you are completely banned for life. You know, uh, yesterday, I got to say, uh, I hated Roger Goodell. I, I still don't like him now. I'm not really big on him. But I hated him as much as I hate Gary Bettman. Yeah, I, I hate Gary Bettman. Big shocker. A lot of hockey fans don't like him, and I'm one of them. But after I read this, you know, my phone uh, sent me the notification. After I read about it, I, I grew a little more respect for Roger Goodell because he's now trying to address this issue and I got a feeling it's because a lot of people probably got pissed because Josh Gordon's getting suspended for a whole season for something that really isn't that bad but guys like Ben Roethlisberger who raped a woman and originally had a six game suspension but he he had an appeal and got it down to four games so what the fuck is that you know and then uh Ray Rice decided not to appeal his two game suspension you know, for the probably for the better, because I seriously doubt he would have been able to appeal that. Um, I just think it's fucked up that uh, you know, in the NFL, well, before this this rule was passed, I just think it's completely fucked up that you know you could get away with beating a woman or raping a woman or just doing anything that's ten that's a hundred times worse than marijuana, but you're gonna suffer less for the the more serious stuff. It's it's bullshit. It's complete fucking bullshit. But I am glad to see that the NFL is taking this whole domestic violence thing a little more serious. And now it's just going to be about execution. Moving on, uh, USC senior defensive back Josh Shaw lied about his ankle injury and has been suspended indefinitely by USC. Josh Shaw got an ankle injury over the weekend. I think he broke his ankle or something. He fucked it up and... He was going to be out indefinitely. Now, he had told everybody that he jumped out of a second-story window from an apartment to save his drowning nephew. When I first heard that, I was like, wow, uh, nothing but respect for this guy. You know, the guy risked his body, his life to save a drowning kid. I, I respect the hell out of this guy, you know. Well, I think it was like two or three days later... He comes out and says he lied about it. I don't know how he broke his ankle for real, but he lied about that that story. Are you kidding? Are you are you fucking kidding me? Why would why would you lie about something like that? That makes no sense. Now you look like a glory hog because that I really think that's all he wanted. He just wanted some, you know, positive attention. There's nothing wrong with wanting positive attention, but don't fucking lie to everybody over it. This whole thing really kills this guy's credibility. Like, if he makes it to the NFL and he starts complaining about another player on the team or a coach or whatever, people are going to have a hard time believing him because he openly admitted that he lied about something. It's just... I, I was texting my bro Josh about it, and I told him about how he lied about everything. And the first thing, the first thing he texted back was, Wow, what an ass. I, I actually agree. This What an ass. One last thing I want to mention before moving on to baseball is that Peyton Manning got fined $8,528 or something around that range of, like that for taunting Houston strong safety DJ Swearinger. I'm actually quite shocked. Not not because the NFL fined Peyton Manning. What I'm really surprised about is Peyton Manning taunting a player. I, I've never... He just doesn't seem like a taunting kind of guy. He seems more like a laid-back, kind of quiet guy who just lets his skills do the talking. He's a great quarterback. I'm just I'm surprised. You know, I really am. I didn't think he would ever taunt anybody. I actually find it kind of funny. <laughs>
All right, guys, I got a baseball jersey on, and I still got short hair. <laughs> Let's talk some baseball. Anibal Sanchez apparently has suffered a setback, and he might miss the rest of the season. This is bad, bad news for the Tigers. You know, this might mean that I've heard they may have to go after Bartolo Colon from the New York Mets because they need a starting pitcher. I don't think tossing a minor league up into that rotation is the best thing. I don't know if they're going to go and make a run at a starting pitcher. The the, the non-waiver trade deadline has way passed. Um, so they'll have to get somebody that was put on waivers. But I'm really hoping Sanchez can come back. Uh, this kind of proves, though, that he's not – Probably not going to be in the rotation if the if the if the Tigers make the playoffs. I I don't see it. He'll probably pitch out of the bullpen. Speaking of waivers, the Tigers claimed Chad Qualls, who is the Houston Astros closer, off waivers. But the Astros had said they were probably going to keep him. The Tigers had till Wednesday to to make a deal, and apparently nothing could be done because he's still with the Astros. I would have loved to have had Chad Qualls. That means we would have four closers in our uh, in our bullpen. That would be really good. You know, they got Jim Johnson, who's doing all right for the Tigers. I'm happy to see that. Uh, Joaquin Soria is about to come back, so that's really good news. Chad Qualls, which would be really cool. And you got Joan Anthon, who's closing games for the Tigers already. And before I get more into Chad Qualls, uh, I just want to say that... Uh, Joe Nathan, uh, when he came out to pitch against the Yankees the other night, um, he was getting cheers, and people were standing behind him. I even heard some chants, you know, let's go Joe. And he got a 1-2-3 inning. He got a save. And, I, you know, I, I know I was ripping on him last week, and I was hating on him. I, I still feel like he has to earn everybody's respect back. But having that 1-2-3 inning and just kind of, Settling the fans down. I, I was really happy to see that. Uh, I do want Joe Nathan to, you know, be a great closer. And he's right now he's 28 for 30, uh, 34. Not the greatest numbers. It is what it is. Um, I still think he can be a good closing pitcher if he just kind of just... Gets back into what he used to be. He was a great closer last year. He was 43 for 46 with like a ERA of under two. I think like a 1.62 ERA or something. This year, not so good, but still here for another year and maybe another two years. He's got a vesting option for a third year with the Tigers. So if he can get himself back in, back together and just pitch like he like he's capable of, I really do think he was going to be a good pitcher. He could be a good closer. But Chad Qualls would have added some depth to the bullpen. And I'm kind of pissed that the Tigers weren't able to make a deal. But I'm also kind of like, you know, what the fuck, Houston? Why put him on waivers if you weren't going to trade him? I want to give a special shout-out to uh, to a friend of mine on Twitter, Jordan Hall. Uh, we were talking a little bit of Tigers baseball while uh, the Tigers were playing the Yankees. And... Uh, they actually won. They won two out of three against the Yankees. Um, so that was good to see. And they won on walk-off fashion today. Alex Avila knocked in the uh, the game-winning RBI. And this is really funny. This is a little story I'm going to tell you guys. I was tweeting. Uh, I tweeted, like, as Alex came up to play, I said, two guys on, two out. Alex Avila's coming to bat. Prepare to head to the ninth. Uh, prepare to head to the tenth, guys. Sure as shit, I fire this tweet. Boom! He knocks it in. I thought it was gone. I thought he hit a three-run homer, a walk-off homer, but no, it bounced off the wall. Got the run in. Tigers win three to two. And then the uh, next thing I tweet was Alex Avila made me look dumb. Yes. <laughs> I don't mind when a player for the Red Wings or the Tigers makes me look stupid, as long as. They do something good for the team. Alex, I know I've given Alex a lot of crap over, you know, over the past year, but he really came through today, so i got to give him credit for that. And uh, I want to, as I was saying, I want to give a special shout-out to Jordan Hall. 
his Twitter name is at Jordan Hall 23. I suggest following him if you are a sports fan. Pretty knowledgeable about sports. All right, guys, I'm rocking a hockey jersey, and I have a small beard. <laughs> you thought I was going to make a comment about my hair, didn't you? Well, I'm going to now. I still have short hair. <laughs> okay, enough playing around. Uh, last thing I want to talk about is Las Vegas has been rewarding an NHL franchise, meaning we're going to have a team in Las Vegas. And... Um, there's going to be another team coming along to uh, to the Western Conference to balance out, you know, the both conferences. Because right now there are 16 teams in the East and 14 in the West. Well, soon to be 15. I don't know when uh, Las Vegas' season is supposed to start. Now, I haven't seen any official confirmations of this, but I was talking to my friend, Bobby J. Shane, uh, 74 on Twitter. You should... Uh, you should give him a follow if you are a sports fan. He's, you know, he's pretty, uh, pretty knowledgeable guy when it comes to sports as well. Um, he told me about it, and he actually said something that I kind of agree with. He said uh, they should just take a franchise with a weak fan base or a franchise that really hasn't done anything in recent years and just move them to Las Vegas or move them to Seattle because Seattle had a hockey team at one time. Like way long time ago, like in the NHL Snow Age. Uh, and I kind of agree with that, but at the same time, it's interesting that, you know, we're, we're getting an expansion in the NHL. Um, now, he pointed out two teams that probably could have moved, and that was Carolina and the Florida, the Carolina Hurricanes and the Florida Panthers. Now, I can see the Florida Panthers moving, because with Carolina... They won a Stanley Cup in 2006, so it really wouldn't make much sense. And uh, if you take Florida and move them out, people in Florida still have a hockey team. They have the Tampa Bay Lightning. So if you were to take the Florida Panthers and move them to Las Vegas or move them to Seattle or somewhere out in the West, it would make more sense. Well, that's not how it's going to happen. You know, the Panthers are still going to have their team, and now we have another Las Vegas team. Coming and we're going to have another Western team coming. So it's kind of interesting. You know, it keeps us all on our toes. And, uh, you know, I, I know there's another team coming because I know Wayne Gretzky's been pushing for a team in Seattle. You know, he really wants a team in Seattle to uh, come along. That's really interesting. I, I wonder I wonder what they're going to do with that. I wonder what the what Las Vegas' team name is going to be. Uh, Las Vegas hasn't really had a professional sports team since the Las Vegas Outlaws in the XFL. I'm not sure if they have one in the AFL. Maybe they do. Uh, I think they have, like, the, the Kiss or something, or is that L.A.? I don't know. I don't watch arena football much, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> and really, the XFL was kind of boring, you know? I mean, when I was a kid, I really liked it. Now I've gone back and watched it, and it's kind of boring. XFL only lasted one season. And actually, a little fact behind the XFL, it was uh, created by Vince McMahon. Yeah, the guy who, uh, the chairman of WWE. Probably not one of his crowning achievements. <laughs> well, that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, ch uh, check me out on Twitter at Cujo06241. Follow me, say hi. Uh, we could talk about sports, movies, anything you want. I, I am a very sociable guy. If you like what you see here and you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. Uh, this is Cujo06241, signing out.